Square Enix wouldn't be the first publisher I'd think of when discussing racing games, but while Circuit Superstars is technically released under the Square umbrella, it's more of an experimental indie publishing arm than the behemoth that brings us the excellent Final Fantasy series, and it's a great experiment and I hope they take more chances on smaller titles like these. But we're here to discuss the top-down racer rather than the intricacies of publishing, so let's get on with that. First released on PC in early access during the weird pandemic times of early 2021, Square and developers' original Fire games had always promised a Nintendo Switch port, but it took another two years to finally hit the aging hybrid console it felt perfect for. The shine had been taken off of playing handheld a little bit, with the release of the Steam Deck in the interim, allowing handheld play a full year before the eventual Switch release, but even so, Circuit Superstars still feels like a perfect fit for the Switch as we originally hoped, although it does have a few caveats. For those uninitiated, Circuit Superstars is a top-down racing game, but unlike most games of this type that lean heavily into arcade-style racing, Circuit Superstars tries to offer a mix of simulation and arcade, both in slightly nuanced handling models and other simulation factors, such as managing your fuel and tyres and offering pit stops. Whilst this is a welcome attempt to be something other than yet another Micro Machines style clone, the simulation aspects don't always land, and with my biggest complaint being the slidey style of car handling, which for some cars, such as rally and sprint cars, feel great, but for more technical vehicles such as modern GP cars or the Euro trucks, drifting round corners just feels a bit weird. As I've hinted there, Circuit Superstars does cater for a wide range of vehicles, from basic tin tops and historic style cars, to trucks and buggies and various single seater styles. Each car does have some nice individual characteristics, trucks feel satisfyingly cumbersome to get up to full speed and handle, whilst the Porsche-like GT3 cars are rockets, and single seaters are nimble around corners but prone to collecting damage at a higher rate. Each car can be customised with different liveries and colour options, and any vehicle can be used in the free play mode where you have a good range of options to create any sort of race you might like. Want to send 1980s GP cars around a dirt oval? Well, then have at it. Outside of free play, there are options to have the track to yourself in a practice mode, compete in time trials, complete with online leaderboards, and try to take on a range of opponents online, although given its age, it can be hard to find online matches now, although cross-platform play does help. The main mode you'll probably spend most of your time in is the Grand Prix mode, which offers self-contained championships in each car class and a chance to earn enough XP to unlock the next set of races. The Grand Prix mode does not mess around either, with 10 lap races pretty much off the bat, with most requiring a pit stop, which does add some nice strategy, but even on the easier end of the multiple difficulty levels available, races are no cakewalk, especially if you find yourself qualifying lower down the grid and needing to fight past the AI. My main issue with Grand Prix mode and maybe Circuit Superstars in general is that whilst the racing feels quite satisfying, especially when you hook up some consecutive corners or pull off a key overtake, there's not much more meat on the bones and ultimately the Grand Prix mode starts to feel like a repetitive slog. You're always earning XP no matter what mode you play in and they all tot up towards new liveries, cars and championships but ultimately you're just grinding similar feeling races one after the other and it does all start to feel a bit samey. You don't really get any feeling of progression in the form of car upgrades or anything else like that which does dull the enthusiasm to keep running race after race. In terms of the switch port, Circuit Superstars generally runs okay with a few dips in performance but nothing that's going to distract you during racing. The circuits do look really nice with lots of colourful trackside detail but as mentioned earlier there is a danger of the tracks all blending into each other a little bit and there aren't really any memorable tracks that stick in the mind. The biggest issue on the Switch is probably the car graphics oddly which can look quite blurry and undetailed and also the shadows in particular are ugly and glitchy which is pretty off-putting. Overall though for racing fans I'd say Circuit Superstars is a must own on the Switch despite the little niggles. The skill curve of improving your technique is rewarding and the range of vehicles and race types does give the game some nice variety whilst the lack of real progression does hurt the game a little bit. The grind of Grand Prix mode did not keep me engaged as much as I hoped it would, but overall there is enough here to keep you coming back.